quickly is show you some basics of cryptography and analyzing a simple cipher, and then I'll do a live demo of how to hide large volumes of data in seemingly innocent files, just as the attackers recently did to steal 21 gigabytes of source code from a company. Now, I'm going to do this with a basic example, because if we did it with modern public key cryptography, I'd have to explain kind of primes, factors, semi-primes, modular arithmetic and the like, and you'd all get really bored and your noses would start to bleed slightly. It's kind of normally what happens. So, I'm going to do this with the Caesar cipher. Here we have a nice encrypted message where each of the letters have been rotated and changed. First kind of angle of attack, we could break down in our message the numbers of occurrences of each letter. So we'll note, for example, there's 21 occurrences of the letter V, and over here we have 13 occurrences of the letter E, which would be normal in the English language. So this is weird because in a normal string, there'd be lots of E's, you know, vowels, and in this, there's lots of V's. So we could say V might be E. Let's make this a little more comprehensive. Let's look for patterns of letters grouped together. Because in the English language, there are lots of letters that are frequently recycled. Our E is a very common combination. By going through this and finding those, we could say, maybe guess, that some of these might be those patterns. We take it even further, there are certain three-letter words that are very common in English, like the. And here in this pattern, we have a series of them. So we could assert that KYV might be equal to the. Now, this is a very simple analysis. I mean, we're using essentially our heads to do this analysis. A computer would do this millions of times per second and massively accelerate it to make it effective against modern crypto. On this basis, K equals T, which means on a normal alphabet, K through to T would be an offset of nine letters, which means if we take the original string, it would give us the secret. Now, no one's nose is bleeding, right? Okay, we're all good. Let's have a look at how they make this interesting in a real environment. On my Windows system here, dun, 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 dun. Ooh, I've lost my mouse, where is it? There it is. I've got some cool little utilities. Let me make this full screen. I've got a little steganography tool called OpenPuff. Now this is a totally freeware tool. It's really cool. The authors did a great job in the implementation. I like to demo this because it's kind of got a nice user interface. It's simple. There are command line versions available that an attacker could use more silently. So what we're going to do is steal some sensitive data by hiding it in some legitimate images. Now I browsed around the internet for a while. I couldn't really decide what image to hide it in. I decided that hiding data in this would be particularly ironic. Okay? Kind of where's Wally data hiding? So we're going to hide this data, and we're going to do it by slightly reducing the image quality, leaving space for us to hide a secret pattern that's only available to someone with the original credentials. So we're going to hide, I'm going to put in three passwords, assuming I can type, okay, there we go, I think I got these correct, if I didn't, I'll distract you all by singing the Canadian National Anthem whilst I fix it. I'm not Canadian, it's just a very pleasing national anthem. Just kind of an infosec tradition. So I'll add my Wally file here. Notice the large array of different file formats in which data can be hidden. The coolest one I've seen so far, an insider hid the data he wanted to steal inside MP3 files that were used for the corporate voicemail server, which is like level 72 black belt ninja stuff. It's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to choose my data file. 
which is going to be mypasswords.txt. Now you may laugh about my passwords, but go and ask your friends and family about their mypasswords.xls and see if you're still laughing after that. An incredibly common trait. Uh, I did ask a guy once how he thought this was a good security idea. He said, oh well, you know, my passwords, I password protected the file. I'm like, is your password password? So we'll add in this file. We're going to hide the data and put it on the desktop. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. In a couple of seconds, we should get a new copy of the Wally file on the desktop. This, if I open it up, is obviously containing hidden data. I mean, you can see how it's different from the last one, right? Yeah, no. If you have the two files side by side, a computer can very easily detect the presence of steganography. But if you delete the original, it can actually be very difficult to even detect steganographic methods, let alone pulling out the original data. So let me close this down. I'll just show you how this is extracted. Obviously, our attacker would upload this to uh, a site like maybe Flickr or something like that. Anything which doesn't resize the image, Dropbox password, drop, Dropbox picture sharing is a very good example. The attacker at the other end simply selects the new Wally file. Here we go, Wally.jpg. And we're going to unhide the data and put it on the desktop, at which point my file, mypasswords.txt, should be spit out and the data has been successfully stolen. And we can do that over the internet. Incredibly simple technique to hide data in plain sight. Not just, uh, not just confidentiality, but secrecy as well.